Has this ever happened to you? That sucks. But hopefully, with the aid of this video, you won't be in much longer. Roxas. This dude's fast as hell, hits hard, and has an amazing battle theme. He's very well known for walling people for hours at a time, because he's a boss that just doesn't give away free damage like so many others do in this game. This frustrates a lot of people, and some even end up quitting the game or even the series because of this one boss. I want to help reduce that number by passing on knowledge to you to make this boss less of a pain and more of an experience. Alright, let's get you set up starting with your items. First and foremost, you really want Decisive Pumpkin as your main Keyblade for this fight, and probably most fights after this one. It's so good. Next up is your armor and accessories. Gonna be honest, they don't matter all that much. Just put on whatever gives you the most defense for armor and the most strength for accessories, unless you really need the AP for an ability. I would take two or three ethers, just in case you end up using a few strategies I mentioned later. The rest can be healing. Potions and high potions work well, but don't be afraid to take a few elixirs if you have any. The fights after this one aren't nearly as difficult. Customization. You can change this later, but I really, really recommend Reflect, and Aethers on Shortcut as well. And now onto abilities, the last thing we need to look at for setup. Let's start out with the action abilities. Guard is essential. We're going to be using it a lot, so you'd better remember it's mapped to square, or X if you're on the cursed Xbox. Slapshot, Flash Step, and Slide Dash should all always be on. They're amazing combo modifiers with little to no downsides, unlike Dodge Slash. Guard Break and Explosion are great for this fight, since we'll be focusing on ground combos. Use them. No autos on. We really don't want to accidentally go into limit form, just out of the habit of seeing a big green button. Trinity Limit will be an amazing damage dealing tool, so we definitely want that. Any growth abilities you have are great, but Quick Run and Dodge Roll both shine in this fight. If you haven't grinded your forms to their current max level, which at this point is 6, I'll be making a guide on the quickest and most efficient way to level up your drive forms and putting it in that little eye in the corner, as well as in the description. If you don't have any, Wisdom Form is really easy to grind here, in the room before the fight, thanks to all these shadows. Now for support abilities. Assuming you aren't doing a level 1 playthrough of this game, you're probably going to want once more. If you have second chance or are close to getting it, that's a great one too. Here are some other things you'll want to consider equipping, but aren't completely necessary. Finishing plus, combo boost, yes the second one, leaf bracer, combination boost, defender, and item boost. Aerial recovery is good if you think you might get hit. You probably will, and it's good to have it as backup. I would recommend not equipping any combo pluses here if you have any. This will change the timing at which he retaliates to your attacks, so some strategies I mentioned won't work for you. Alright, now that we're all set, it's on to the fight. First and foremost, we're going to have a look through his attacks, and any tells that can clue you in on what attack is coming up. Vicinity Slash. This is the move he always starts the fight with. You'll hear a and you can see him cross his blades behind him. Then he unleashes a wide circular attack. There are a lot of ways to avoid this, but the best are probably Guard and Reflect, both of which give you an opening. All you need to do is get the timing down, which isn't very difficult. Combo. This is one of the two moves he'll use up close to you, the other being Vicinity Slash. When I said Roxas is fast, this is what I meant. It's very difficult to react to, so you generally want to predict it. I'll talk about that later. The best way to deal with this move is guard it twice, then wait a bit for him to reel back for either a third guard or a Reflect. If you took my advice earlier and have once more, you probably won't die from getting hit by this, but there is a way to still make your mistake in opening. After the first two swings, you'll get launched up into the air. Just mash aerial recovery, and as soon as you see that you used it, mash into reflect for a free opening. Hurricane Dive. He jumps up into the air and pauses for a second before diving down towards you. He'll generally use this at range, or if you make him retaliate in the air. There are quite a few ways to avoid it, but the only one that actually benefits you is Reflect. He's not really open after this one, and he'll probably start dashing after to set up another attack, 
so don't try attacking. Light Vicinity Slash. This is the same as before, but with some lasers. They come down around Roxas, and they always seem to be just in the way of guarding it, since all lasers are unguardable. You want to Chain Reflect twice for this, or some other form of invulnerable attack like Trinity Limit. Light Combo. Once again, same as before, but with supplemental lasers. They come out from his side and race towards Sora. The best way to deal with this is the exact same way you did without lasers. Once again, getting hit by this isn't the end of the world. One thing I forgot to mention is that if you're already in the air when you get hit by the beginning of this combo, you'll be launched too high for Reflect to get you an opening. Light Hurricane Dive. Whoa, this one's got lasers? That's freaking- that's crazy! What the- oh my- Same thing, just Reflect it. Guarding will probably get you hit, but quick run and dodge roll do work. The definitely unfair mega bullshit attack. You're dead. You're actually dead. Even if you have once more, sometimes it just knocks you out of it, even if you don't aerial recovery, and kills you anyway. This move is seriously so stupid. It comes out so fast, and if he does it, you're dead, and you just die, and there's nothing you can do about it. Okay, hold on. I just learned you can uh, guard this attack if you react fast enough, except that last bit. Uh, reflect for that last part. It's still obscenely fast, but fucking good job if you guard it. Uh, I would imagine there'd be an opening after, but maybe not. I, I really don't like testing this move. Faith. He uh, dashes to the center of the arena, summoning a circle of lasers to surround him before shooting a salvo of light orbs at Sora. He's completely invincible during this entire attack, so trying to hit him is pointless. Besides, we have more pressing matters, the orbs. Just run along the edge of the arena. They won't hit you if you do it right. If you want to be safer, you can dodge roll or quick run along the side. The only way you can make an opening out of this is timing Trinity at the end. Oh my god, this one's just lasers! These only happen if you manage to steal his Keyblades, which you can pause over and over to make it easier. There's only three types, and you can dodge roll or quick run through all of them. I would honestly recommend continuing to dodge until the camera angle changes. It's the signal that you'll have to hit the reaction command to not take damage, and it's also an opening. Now that you've seen what he can do, let's go over what you can do. This section's all about techniques to help you maximize damage and minimize risk. You really don't want to give him more chances to attack, so the faster you kill him, the better. I'll be talking about three different techniques that'll help you shred his HP bar, starting with something simple, then working up to slightly more complicated inputs. First up is Trinity Limit. If you equipped it earlier like I suggested, you'll find it in your second menu, which you reach by hitting left on the D-pad. Trinity works differently when Sora's alone, so if you know how it works with party members, it's just the break part. Once you activate it, you don't have to do anything except hit the RC to hit the second part and the third if you brought combination boost. The amazing thing about this limit is the way that it hits allows Sora to follow up with a combo of his own, or this next tech. Next up is Limit Form. One reason to use Limit Form in this fight is to stay alive. Since going into a form restores your HP and MP fully, it's great to use in a pinch. Every hit during a limit restores HP. Sonic Rave is a really good panic limit, since mashing it lets you both attack and be basically invulnerable during the whole thing. Since you can only use around two limits before being forced into MP recharge, using it to maximize damage is definitely a good idea. The best one to use for damage is Last Arcanum. You could mash out the entire limit, but there's a better way to use it. Without getting too in-depth, Roxas will not retaliate during this entire limit until the final hit. That means the smartest thing to do is just not do the last hit. And what's even better about Ars Arcanum is that by not landing the last hit, you set yourself up for another combo, which can lead into Ars Arcanum again. You can continue this up to three times if you throw an ether to yourself right before you activate Ars Arcanum. Remember that going into a drive knocks enemies into the air, including Roxas. Using this after Trinity is an amazing idea, but you have to chain a hit or two between for it to work. And now for the final technique, looping. When someone says looping in a Kingdom Hearts game, it generally means making the boss do what you want them to do so you can punish accordingly. In this case, we'll be abusing his retaliation, or revenge. For this technique, you need a finishing plus. If you don't have one in your support, Rumbling Rose has it. The basic premise of the loop is this. Roxas will retaliate when this bar is filled or exceeded. Each move fills the bar a different amount, and once it's filled, he'll attempt to strike back. In this case, the loop will always start out with Reflect. 
After that, it's a simple 1-2-3 combo that ends in a guard break into a finishing leap. That puts Roxas's bar around here. We need it here or higher. So we wait for him to land, hit him once, and cast Thunder. Now, this exceeds the bar, so at this point he will retaliate. Since we know he will, we can preemptively cast a finishing reflect into a guard break and start over from his landing. As long as we have MP, we can continue this. That means after the second guard break, we need to use an ether. Starting at this point, a normal hit will no longer fill the bar. We need to swap over to using Blizzard as a substitute. Otherwise, the combo continues the same way. To show you how effective this technique is, here's the entire fight at level 1 with no stat boosts using only this strategy. Just kidding, gotta beat it yourself. Okay, you know how you've probably been playing KH2 up till this point? Don't. Mashing X won't work here. Take that little thumb of yours and chill out. We need to play defensively against this guy. Remember that if you ever need to heal in this fight, find an opening first and use a potion. Reflect is too valuable to risk wasting all your MP on cure. He always starts out with Vicinity Slash, so reflect it or guard it. He's open once you do. Now don't get greedy with your combos. Hit a combo on him, wait for him to land, and hit another one. He'll land, recover, and will probably start either of his ground moves. I suggest just walking up to him and guarding as soon as he's about to wake up. If he does his combo, great, you just continue the guard. If he does Vicinity Slash, you can guard again or reflect for some more damage. Phase 2 is when the light variations of his moves come in, as well as his DM. Once he's in Phase 2, you can't stand as close to him as you did before to fish for openings, or else you risk getting slapped by a laser during his Vicinity Break charge up. Being far away is even more dangerous than before, since dodging light combos lasers is kinda difficult when trying to make an opening. If you do steal his Keyblades, I would recommend either waiting it out and dodging, or using invincible moves like Trinity or dodging into him and activating Limit Form. Phase 3 just has him send out a laser whenever he's about to start his DM, and makes DUMB last longer. If you don't want to deal with that attack for longer than you need to, consider trying out any of the tech I described. Alright, that seems to be all the info I've got. Hopefully this helps you get past this roadblock or makes the fight a little bit more enjoyable. If you have any tips I didn't mention for your fellow Keyblade wielders, throw them down in the comments. Have a great day y'all. Go get that, uh, Zehanort report. I didn't want to spoil anything.